Well, the Dallas police chief gave us an update on the officers killed and the suspects involved. It was pretty emotional. Uh, we cornered one suspect and we tried to negotiate for several hours. Uh, negotiations broke down. We had an exchange of gunfire with the suspect. Uh, we saw no other option but to use our bomb, bomb robot and place a device on the, its extension uh, for it to detonate where the suspect was. Other options would have exposed our officers to grave danger. Uh, the suspect is deceased as a result of de detonating the bomb. Uh, the reporting that the suspect killed himself is not accurate. We've confirmed that he's been deceased because of the detonation of the bomb. We're hurting. Our profession is hurting. Dallas officers are hurting. We are heartbroken. There are no words to describe the atrocity that occurred to our city. All I know is that this, this must stop, this divisiveness between our police and our citizens. Well, Ron Hosko joins us again on the phone. Ron, you are a CBS a News security consultant. You're also a former FBI assistant director. And wow, that was a very uh, moving and interesting press conference with the chief of police from Dallas. Uh, we heard something very interesting. We heard that the suspect that was killed was not killed by his own hand. He did not shoot himself, which is what we had initially heard and were reporting. He was killed as a result of a bomb, a bomb that police used uh, they used a robot to get the bomb closer to him, and he was killed that way. Is, is that surprising to you? Earlier we were talking, and you said it's a very rare technique. It is. Uh, there were a lot of surprises out of uh, the chief's mouth uh, this morning. First, you know, what we were initially being told was multiple subjects, uh, some of whom might have been triangulating the police. And now it sounds like, uh, you know, once again, initial reports might have been grossly inaccurate. Mm -hmm. uh, if this might have been just one, uh, one shooter that did all this harm to police, usually in, a, in an encounter of that nature, you know, even if you have a barricaded subject, no hostages, the police are going to try to negotiate until the end of negotiations. And that may end with, you know, tactical action by the police in that sort of encounter. There's really, uh, you know, absent more, there's no hurry. If you have somebody who is really cornered um, and can do no greater harm, then it typically ends with a suicide or maybe a tactical action that involves, uh, you know, a police sniper mm -hmm. or a tactical team. But almost never do you hear the police using explosives on a bomb robot to end the encounter, and that sounds like what happened here. Yeah, and uh, you know, you mentioned that there were a number of surprising things that came out of that press conference. Um, the police chief and the mayor did not want to give us too much information because, of course, it is an ongoing criminal investigation. But they spent hours talking to the suspect. Uh, police negotiators spent hours talking to the suspect. And what they learned from him was that he was angry. He, the, the police chief described him as lucid but angry, upset about or uh, for the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, he wanted to shoot police officers. He wanted to shoot white police officers in particular. Um, um, when you heard about uh, those details, about what may have motivated the suspect, what, what were you thinking? Boy, it just takes me right back to New York City a year and a half ago after the Garner and uh, 